It look like you stole a midget pants. But if you touch my junk, I'm gonna have you arrested. Well, that's it. I don't like getting weed in the grind. It's the weekly Epic Epoch update. A rundown of this week's four articles that I published. First one to get to is another in the series called Abortions Arguments. And this tracks several of the arguments that people make in order to make them feel better about supporting abortion. Of course, these are all psychological band-aids. And um, one way you can know that is that if you take the arguments we're considering and you try to apply them to anything else, say a baby that is uh, one inch outside of the womb, or one minute outside of the womb, then it no longer works. Of course, people are seeking to change that as well. But in this case, we're considering terminology. And the terminology we're looking at this time is pro-choice and pro-abortion. Because some people claim that there's a difference. Right? Oh, I'm not pro-abortion. No, no, I'm not. I'm merely pro-choice. And the choice can include life, so therefore I'm pro-life. Yeah, well, um, when they're all pro-life rallies, who opposes them but pro-life people? I mean, uh, pro-choice people. So, you know, it's another band-aid. It's another, oh, you know, I believe it's wrong, but I can't tell anyone else what to do. Oh, that's funny. I believe murder is wrong, but I can't tell anyone else what to do. You know, it's these things that just don't don't work anywhere, uh, except within these narrow parameters of making yourself feel better about supporting one of the most immoral things that you could possibly imagine, or rather, I should say, unethical. Another article was in a series. This is actually the last one in the series about the Quran and the Bible or more generally Islam and Christianity. In this case, we're looking at the fact that the Hadith itself uh, gives evidence for the Bible's reliability. So, as with many religious groups, the uh, Islam has sacred scriptures plus, right? So, for instance, in Judaism, you have the written Tanakh, the Old Testament, plus the Talmud and the Midrashim. In Catholicism, you have the written Bible plus the traditions. And likewise in Islam, you have the written Quran plus the Hadith, which are the doings and sayings of Muhammad. And there are hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of Hadith. There's various collections of Hadith. And uh, so in this case, we're looking at the fact that even uh, Islamic traditions affirm that the Bible is a reliable text. And of course, what we've been driving at all along is the old Islamic conundrum, which is that if Islam is true, that is, if the Quran and the Hadith are accurate in their statements about the Bible, then the Bible is accurate. And if the Bible is accurate, then the Quran, the Hadith, and therefore Islam is not legitimate. Because the Bible contradicts that which Islam stands for. So, uh, in other words, this whole series has been about providing evidence, the quotations and citations that you can use when you're discussing such topics. Another article is on near-death experiences, and it's just really based on an article I ran across. And um, along with it, I'm publishing a, a video of an experience I had, not a near-death experience, but just an experience that pertained to undergoing an operation and being offered, thank God they offered it and they didn't just give it to me, a uh, pharmaceutical drug that would quote-unquote help you forget. Uh, 
uh, which I refused to take and I had to refuse firmly three times by the way <laughs> and they got me thinking as is noted by a medical professional within the article that I quoted that um, you know you would wonder if a lot more people would have these near-death experiences if it wasn't for the fact that they're being pumped full of drugs that help you forget so uh, check out the uh, article and the video that goes along with it because there's you know some food for thought there uh, like I said in the video I'm not exactly sh prepared to proclaim it a conspiracy theory but it's you know it's right in that range shall we say lastly it's an article about yet another scandal pertaining to an artist playing off of the idea of Our Lady of Guadalupe which is uh, a concept based on an apparition in the 1500s where supposedly Mary appeared to Juan Diego and told him to build a sanctuary to her okay first thing Juan Diego should have said is the Lord rebuke you Satan who are you that we should build a sanctuary to you I mean that's one way right there that you know it's not really Mary but um, this was an art display in Santa Fe and Santa Fe has a long history of being um, the New Age and witchcraft center of New Mexico and uh, all kinds of well let's just put it this way if you go to the city's website you can find out about their homosexual tourist package you know you can't find for some odd reason a heterosexual tourist package but anyhow that's the kind of city it is and They've had a lot of issues with um, religious imagery being well used, abused, misused, and in this case, it's an artist that depicted a takeoff of the traditional painting of Our Lady of Guadalupe with, uh, you know, most of her body just out in the open. Um, now I'm also posting a specific uh, video about this to show you the images and by the way uh, most of the images I use in my videos I end up posting to my Flickr site so if you want them or sometimes I include text in them and it's hard to read on a little YouTube screen you can always go to my Flickr site and um, check out the tons and tons and tons of images I've paste, posted there Actually, I find that this artist um, had an interesting take on the whole thing. Uh, I think he uh, hit the nail on the head much more than anybody realizes. And, uh, well, I explain all that in the article and video. So, there's the Epic Epoch update. Because we're living in an Epic Epoch. Till next time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My wife thinks I'm in the bathroom.